The All Black legend Justin Marshall joins us. Marshy, welcome back, mate. Good afternoon, Marty. Um, yes, yeah, good to be back, and what a weekend of rugby that was. Yeah, cracking weekend, and kicking off with the highlights, obviously, from that uh, last game. We'll talk about 24-0 to the Chiefs in the second half. Who saw that coming? Not me, um, possibly not you, and, and probably many listeners as well. Uh, it, it was just an emphatic victory from the Chiefs. Look, the game... Uh, sort of flowed in either direction in the first half. And, uh, you know, after the, after the break, the Chiefs came out and they just had better uh, game plan. They executed uh, much more accurately than the Crusaders and ultimately they outscored them on their home patch four tries to one uh, to, to show that they were worthy winners and deserved winners. We saw last year, though, didn't we? I mean, up until the final when the Crusaders played their greatest game, they were a little sluggish at times during the round robin. Same as what we saw on Friday. Yeah, they were. Um, uh, probably the worrying thing for me from Friday night, from a uh, if the Crusaders were looking at that game in its entirety and, and trying to boil down where it went wrong, was it wasn't that they had such a bad night off or they were sort of their own worst enemies by coughing the ball up. It was the way that the Chiefs, particularly in the second half, just dictated the game to them and they had no answer. Uh, and... That doesn't often happen to the Crusaders. Yes, they can have a mediocre day, like many teams can, um, quite often staying in the fight and somehow finding a way to win. But by their own admission, it wasn't anything that they did. It was the it was the execution, as I mentioned, but also the way that the Chiefs put them under pressure. Uh, when they got them into their uh, zone, they made sure that they put those that pressure into points and... They basically dictated the style of the game, and uh, that does that doesn't usually fit with the criteria when the Crusaders are beaten. And it has happened, like you said, uh, most recently during the round robin. Just got a text in from Rob. He said, "Guys, did you notice the difference between the new running game plan compared to the old box kick style? Ireland, Italy, Blues, and Chiefs all played open running rugby and kicked to open space, not not the box kicks. What else did you notice in terms of this the speeding up of the game?" Well, I certainly feel that it was really well officiated at the weekend. Um, yeah, you know, agree. the players were un- unable to uh, take take the piss basically any time um, that there was a scrum set or a line out. They were constantly saying, uh, "You're on the clock," including shots at goal. Certainly found that the ball was in play a lot more. What was what was very uh, evident to me was the fact that in the last quarter, because the ball had been played a lot more, because there wasn't huge rest periods. Uh, teams were fatiguing, and that's when your bench um, makes a, a massive difference, which I thought the Chiefs bench was outstanding uh, on Friday night. Uh, the, 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 also, the Hurricanes and their victory, their bench was very, very good. Uh, so you need that factor to come into it now because with the ball and play more, players are getting much, much more tired um, up to that 60th minute mark. So that, that was very much um, what I took out of that first round. No, I mean, we're going to be asking all kinds of questions at the end of each round, so I'll just pop them to you. I mean, because obviously, you know, your opinions and things will change throughout the season. Did Mackenzie outplay Richie Mawanga at first five? I thought Richie was kind of subdued. Yeah, I think he did. Uh, look, obviously, he had the lion's share of ball, and then he had the ability uh, when uh, Josh Iwane came on to shift out and, and get in a bit more open space uh, from fullback. But uh, I certainly feel that the game plan that the Chiefs Went into that game. Went into that particular game with uh, suited Damien McKenzie. They often did block plays, uh, and because he's very good laterally when he runs um, from first five, uh, they set up plays right from the opening kickoff. The very first kickoff, they they phased once, then it went to Tokiaho. He had two players outside him, and steady threw it out the back. McKenzie went lateral inside his 22 and created massive space um, of which you can either run or kick with. So. Yeah, no doubt about it. He got into his mojo really well. He was helped by an excellent game plan. Um, but I thought Richie just looked a little bit uh, off off on the night. Um, and you'd have to say points to McKenzie quite conclusively. Justin Marshall with us. We'll go through the games in chronological order. I didn't watch the Force Rebels. So I'd be, I'd, I was done by that stage. I don't know. So, look. Um, but Waratah's Brumbies. Did the Brumbies show you enough to suggest that they're again going to be Australia's best side? Yeah, well, I, I sort of um, went into the bar after watching that Chiefs Crusaders game and sat down to watch it with my with a nice cold beer and thought, ho hum, this is going to be probably painful after what we've just seen. And man, I must say, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, the game had 
exactly, well, not quite the same physicality, but definitely the same tempo. Um, you know, there was some real skill set out there, and uh, it really, it really looked a different um, product to watch that what they were producing last year in those Australian derby games. Um, the Brumbies looked the real deal. Really interesting. New Zealand players always find playing the Brumbies difficult. They they feel that they are a very good side uh, and never an easy beat. Uh, the Waratahs had a great season last year. Um, in answer to your question, yes, the Brumbies look the part. Uh, it'll be a belter of a game coming up this weekend when they take on the Blues in Melbourne um, because yeah, they look they look a real threat in this competition. Were the Blues that good or were the Highlanders that bad or are we going to award a bit of both? Yeah, I think a bit of both when I've sort of reflected on it. Um, I certainly feel that when they wanted to, the Blues, uh, and, and they pounced whenever the Highlanders coughed the ball up to them, they pounced like nothing else. And, uh, you know, they had players across the park willing to attack off any turnover. Uh, some, of, some of the little subtle skills, the handling um, and, and close close quarters to free up space, uh, the kicking game of Bowden Bow, who I thought had an excellent game. You know, we, we all know what Mark Taylor did on the night. Oh, yeah, brilliant, um, brilliant. Across the board, they were very, very good, weren't they? And, and, and they, they were just lethal should you give them a sniff. So conversely, you shouldn't give them and gift them ball and give them a sniff and allow them to get into their rhythm and find their mojo and let those individuals shine. And the Highlanders were massively guilty of that. They, they coughed the ball up many, many times just with basic handling errors. Uh, other errors they uh, gave up when they had made many line breaks and panicked to try and find a support player. Uh, that they were certainly um, the architects of their own demise to a, to a great uh, extent, but equally, I think they were just up, up against a side on the night that was always going to be better than them. Justin Marshall with us on the platform. We're talking Super Rugby from across the weekend. Cracking round of rugby. What a great opening round it was. And look, names are going to come to us right throughout this competition all the way through to the World Cup, Marshy. So you mentioned Mark Talia there. And look, on that form, if you picked an all-black side today, he'd probably be the right wing. Having said that, I thought Sevo Roos played bloody well as well, especially on the defensive end, which was pleasing to see. But once again, you know, we always panic in World Cup. Are we going to have the players? Are we going to... This is what I love about the Super Rugby competition. Guys have the opportunity to put their hand up, and Mark Talia is one of them. Yeah, he certainly is. Yeah, he made massive strides last year and deserved his uh, test debut um, and, and the subsequent tests he got in the UK. Uh, and he, he looked one of the most dangerous players that the All Blacks had on that Northern Tour. He's obviously taken great confidence from that. You know, a, a player can get real belief when he, he makes that big step, which uh, Tully did at the end of last year, and he's carried that form into super. What, what, I, what I really like about Mark uh, Talia, Talia uh, Debs is he's actually playing in his rightful position. He's not getting messed around. He's not getting go. shifted to fullback yep. or given a go in the centres. Mate, he's a winger. He runs bloody fast. He's got great skills in the air. That's his position. He knows it. He plays it well. We need to start selecting players where they're best. And by sure, he is, uh, he is the form winger at, at the moment. So, yes, my answer to your question would be, should they be pick, picking an all-black team tomorrow? He'd be in that 11 jersey without doubt. Yes, yeah, and look, a couple of things you've added there. So when you get that call-up, when you actually become, you know, a member of that black jersey club, it doesn't just raise, you know, just, I mean, your chest puffs out a bit. You feel a lot better about yourself. But... You, you know, what we want is you've got to go up another level, don't you? And so you've seen that distinct improvement. I mean, he had it last year, plays really well on that tour, and that extra confidence is what we saw, what you're saying on Saturday night. Absolutely. And it lifts your, your own um, mindset and performance and standards and expectation. Because when you do step into the All Blacks, you're stepping into one of the premier sporting teams in the world. And, and the level of expectation at training... Uh, at, at doing your homework, um, at pl of playing, you know, of preparation, all of that is at such a different level than what you've ever been used to. Now, you can either sink and swim, or sink or swim in that respect. Um, no doubt about the fact that Mark Talia went, on, went away from that tour, having gained huge confidence, becoming a, a test all black, but equally learning and knowing what it takes to take his game to the next level. And I think that was very evident at the weekend. Justin Marshall with us. Can we already assume that four, if not five, of the New Zealand sides are going to make the top eight? I mean, because, I, look, I looked at the Canes versus the Reds game and I thought it was very similar to the Blues versus the Highlanders. I, in the end, I wasn't sure whether the Canes are that damn good or whether the Reds were that awful. But, obviously, the New Zealand side superior. Yeah, no, I think we probably would be able to say with reasonable certainty that we should get four through. But, 
uh, you know, opening round is opening round. Um, I, I thought the Canes had the most difficult challenge of the weekend to go to Townsville completely out of their, uh, their comfort zone in terms of temperature uh, and a place they'd never, well, I don't think they'd never played there before. Uh, and, and against a very good side, the Reds, stacked full of Wallabies, um, tough forward pack, you know, good, good uh, nine ten combination, um, but they were quite uh, comfortably the better team on the night. So they, the way they uh, went about their method um, in Townsville was very impressive. In fact, if I'm sitting um, in Brad Thorne's coaching box, and I would be thinking, why the hell did we take that game to Townsville? Because they looked like they didn't cope with the conditions as well as the Hurricanes. They dropped a lot of ball because it was slippery. Uh, they fatigued a lot quicker. And you would have thought it would be the opposite, and that would be the reason they would be taking the Hurricanes out of their comfort spot. So it massively backfired on them. Great to see another liner lining up too, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, isn't he? A chip off the old block. Isn't and, he? Um, you know, uh, came through the system in the, in the UK because that's where Michael Lyon had played and then resided after he finished over there and went through the England under-20s. Um, he had some time with Harlequins as well, but uh, he's obviously made a move back to Queensland and um, he'll only get better from that experience. He wouldn't have played uh, the, the level of physicality and skill set of a New Zealand team um, anywhere in his time uh, uh, of his rugby career up until that point. So there's real potential there uh, and good to see... Uh, a young talent um, coming out of Australia, uh, originally back in Australia and applying his trade. A couple of quick questions, we'll let you go. Always thank you so much for your time, mate. MP versus the Fijian and Drua, and I was saying, look, it was a cracking game to watch. I mean, look, they, those, look the, the two teams, you know, glorious to see that particular game, and it has a close finish and everything else, but if you want to actually progress in this competition, there's got to be some real... There's got to be some more structure, some more set piece, and there's just got to be a bit more adherence to a game plan. I mean, I saw. I mean, I, th- I felt like I was watching two sides play sevens rugby out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you used the very the, the, the most appropriate word, which is structure. You know, the game w- 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 was well set up for both of those sides to go out and entertain, and, and they are both of a similar mindset. So they and, and credit to both of them, they entered in to that mindset, and so it became a game free-flowing, um, full of raining tries and, you know, length of the field magic. Uh, and, and that was a great, great spectacle for the game. It was an outstanding game to watch and dramatic as well with a, a last gas win for the draw. But, you know, bang on, mate. We, when you come up against uh, some of the more seasoned franchises, um, you, you will have to revert back to making sure that you set pieces in play and the game won't be allowed to open up like that because other teams... If I'm going in, put it this way, if I'm going into a game against Moana Pacifica or the Fijian Drua, 100% I'll be saying our game plan is to not allow them to be that expressive. We need to shut them down, we need to peg them in their 22 and make sure that every time they're trying to run, they're trying to run from their own goal, behind their own goalposts. So, yeah, they'll have to adjust both those teams very quickly from that style of game to what's going to happen to them this weekend. I'm going to give a ranking order or a power ranking order at the end of each round, mate, every week and see whether we agree. This is my top five after week one. It's only one, one week. I put the Chiefs at number yep. one because they won that game. I put the Brumbies at two because... I'm trying to be nice to Australia, and they're going to have to get one side in there. Crusaders at three for me. One bad loss does not make a season. I'll put the Blues at four, Canes at five. So Chiefs, Brumbies, Crusaders, Blues, Canes. I'm a top five. Yeah, no, I, I don't tend to disagree apart from the fact that I've swapped the Blues and the Crusaders around. Um, I certainly feel that the Crusaders, uh, having, having lost uh, the likes of Whitelock and also when they lost Cullen Grace, um, if they lose some of their big players... I'm not sure they've got the depth that the Blues have got. Um, that's just just throwing it out there. I just think that they are uh, not as strong in, in the, on the bench or in the depth of their squad as what they have been in the past. And finally, what was it like, mate? Back in the saddle, Nisbo on side, game of code. <laughs> Brilliant, though. Eh? Wasn't it good? Yeah, yeah, it was awesome, Devs. I mean, I haven't been on the tools since uh, about the 20. 20- 6th of October, I think it was, because I missed that end of year tour. Yes. I, I, the last game I called was Japan. So um, it's been a long time um, but being back uh, live at the grounds and calling the game, um, and they were exciting games to be involved in as well. So, yeah, it was brilliant, mate. I had a, had a cracking weekend and um, really, really enjoyed it. Thanks, Justin. We'll talk again next Monday. Justin Marshall with us. Devlin. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. The Platform.